I remember very clearly getting a text from um, Caroline Newell, the senior producer at NTS, and I was just about to get on an aeroplane. I was in City Airport. It was the end of term. My full-time job is as vice principal at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. So I run a drama school. And, um, and it was the end of term and I was super tired and I couldn't wait to get home, back to Edinburgh. I got this text from Caroline saying, um, would you read this play, please? And we need an answer very quickly. So then I got on the plane and I couldn't read the play because I couldn't download it on the plane. I was in the air thinking about this. Um, and she had said it was by May. And May I knew from years back from when um, I ran the Traverse Theatre and I'd met with him and knew his work and I was very taken with May. We hit it off. So I had um, about an hour and a quarter on a plane thinking this could be really exciting. Um, and so I got off the plane and um, I read the play and I thought, oh my God, this is huge. This is significant and powerful and timely and challenging and profound and all of the things that um, theatre can be, that we hope it will be. And, um, and so it was very difficult because my other response was, I can't do this. I can't direct this play. This play is for a person of colour to direct. For all sorts of reasons about where the opportunity has lain and continues to lie. Um, and because of the story, because of the subject matter, uh, I felt that someone with a lived experience, specifically a black lived experience, would be the best person to direct the play. So with a very um, conflicted um, heart, I responded to that effect. And then May got in touch with me. <laughs> um, May sent me an email and made the most um, eloquent, uh, moving, um, tenacious, uh, charismatic, all the things that May is. Um, I won't, I don't know what it was, um, request for me to reconsider and made a really compelling argument that as a, you know, as a black playwright, um, he had that element of lived experience covered and that the black character was one of four characters there were three white characters in this play and that what he was exploring was history that black history is white history is black history this history belongs to all of us we are all um, involved we are all the legacy of this history and also, he did a really uh, flattering job of saying, and I want you to direct it because I think you're a great director. I love your work, you know. So I, um, I was, I was um, won over by his argument, not without trepidation, not without um, concern, but um, we decided we'd do it together and that it was very important for me to make sure that in that room was lived experience alongside mine so that we had a real diversity and representation of human beings and creative practice um, because that was going to be the best way forward and it's always for me got to be the best idea in the room we'll always win around any question how should we do it what should we try and um, if that's limited to one demographic then we are closing down possibility um, both imaginative and actual. And so for me, it was the rarest privilege to be in this room with so many different human beings um, from all corners of the globe, let alone all corners of Scotland, United Kingdom, and at very different stages of our various careers and with very different um, backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, um, geographical backgrounds, educational backgrounds, creative practices. And, um, and that for me was made us a bit of a dream team. Our difference, you know, as well as what unified us, what unified us was this play, our absolute devotion and dedication to this play and the work. But what we brought to it was lots of different frames of reference um, and practices 
The first piece of work I did was with May. It was May and I and Rosie Kelleher, who's uh, the dramaturg at NTS, um, reading the play and giving notes and thoughts on the play. And one of the things that May was very upfront for was, I would really like you to do that with my play. Tell me what you think. Give me your notes. Um, because of my new writing background, that's my offer. And because we didn't have much time, I said, so the deal will be that I will do that, May, but I won't hide my hand. I'll just be really clear and upfront. And he ran with that. We really found a very um, energized, frank, um, convivial uh, way of working together. So I sent him notes. He'd work on the notes. He'd send me another draft, more notes, conversation. And what really struck me was, and this is where lived experience comes in or understanding of your subject matter, that some of my notes came from a place of not understanding, uh, of not having done as much research as he had, of, not, um, of some of my concerns, I think, are part of my white privilege uh, that, that he could unpack from his perspective and we could tie into what it was he wanted to achieve as a playwright with his play. And so it was a huge education for me this process, uh, as well as a kind of creative adventure. So essentially what we did, probably like the bluntest way to say it was the play re probably reduced by about a third. And also mindful it didn't become a history lesson because he'd done so much research, uh, so much fascinating research, because this is real stuff. He had real accounts and documents from the time that it didn't become overpacked with facts and become too historical, that it, for me, it was important this was about human beings and their relationships rather than a kind of history lesson. I just try and work with what I've been given rather than what I don't have. I don't do too much research away from the play, like from the written text itself. I'm fascinated by the words on the page we haven't all read the books, we haven't all been to the library, we haven't all done our PhD in this subject, but we have what you've given us, these words on a page. And so I try and become as expert as I can in those words so that then I can go on to do my bit, which is uh, make them live in three dimensions. And it's my job really just to hold a space for everyone to do their best work. I'm very much about who else is in the room and I become very fascinated by the characters and then the actors playing the characters. Um, I've said that I'm completely fascinated with May uh, and then the creative team who'd come in and, and work with us that my job is to hold a space for them all to fly you know and to be extraordinary. Um, so I think it's quite open that as I say it's not I've got so this is how we're going to do the play everyone I don't come in like that at all and say well where are you with the character? Let's dig into the text so we can check where we think we are with the character as to what's actually been written. And then we just play. I, I like getting the, the play up as soon as I can because it's a new play. We can't do that straight away because we have to read it um, and just sense check it. Do we understand that reference? Do you know what that word is? Oh, that's a repetition. We can probably edit that out. So we probably edited at least another quarter of it in the first week and May brought new bits in so it was very live it was um, evolving all the time and what that does is it gives the uh, the actors a fantastic ownership of that piece of work it's theirs because their thoughts feelings questions are immediately activated and May is so generous and open and he's like me I think he wants the best idea and it doesn't have to be his so the play was evolving and then after the first week and we worked physically very quickly. We worked with two brilliant movement directors, Ingrid and Anna. And I suppose, like me, they work outside in. What are the pictures of the play? What's the feeling of the play? And I think very visually. So they would work with the actors on how they move around the space is in character, um, what it means to be of a certain class, uh, what you present outside versus what you feel inside. And then I started seeing pictures and shapes that made it into the play. For example, there was one exercise in that first week where Rachel Rose McLaren was crawling on the floor. Now her character is a lady. She presents 
absolutely for show, that everything's wonderful and she's very mannered, she carries herself magnificently, but inside that character is devastated. And she did an exercise where her character crawled across the floor and I thought, that is going in the show. Because imagine just seeing that counterpoint um, in that performance. And also imagine she'll be in this huge dress with all the petticoats and the corset and there she goes crawling. So um, watching them play and work and thinking that's a beautiful image. There's something in that rhythm between you two. And for me, the play, I did know going into rehearsal that the play was all about the four actors because we weren't having scene changes. We weren't having a big set. We weren't, it, it, it was a small studio production that had to work on three sides. So it was going to be very compact and compressed. The audience were very close. And so I thought, as ever, I like things to be spare and minimal so we can really focus on the actors. I think there were many challenges because of the subject matter being so confronting, traumatic, painful. And so we were careful with each other. We didn't work all hours of the day. We didn't always go for it. Um, and we all did some work on the very first day of rehearsal around anti-racist practice and also around the history of enslaved people from Africa to the Caribbean to Northern Europe. So we understood, as, as, as well as you might in a very short period of time, together as a community creating something, the scale and impact and ongoing legacy um, of slavery. And I think that was vital. Um, it was vital for us because it made our motivation to tell this story unified and mm, resolute because so many of us didn't know the history or not in any kind of um, more detailed way so that was very useful but also taking care working again with Ingrid uh, and Anna how we touched each other literally touched each other how we work through some of the more violent, both uh, psychologically as, um, as well as physically, scenes of the play. I think it was giving time and space and listening. I was, one of the biggest pieces of learning for me was there were parts of the play that I was um, frightened of. I was frightened that they would uh, trigger um, both the actors and the audience. So I would, there would often be a conversation about what's okay, what's not okay. Um, and a real feeling from many of the creative team and from Omar that the point of telling this story is to tell the truth. And the truth is horrifying. And that creating a courage to um, portray very difficult, very difficult um, circumstance and action but in an informed way, that, um, as informed as we could be, because no doubt it took its toll um, on the company um, in a way that is still very um, conflicting, I think, to think about what's okay, what's not okay. What's okay, what's not okay, and by whose measure? And I'm still, you know, there's no perfect, neat response to that question but it's where we find ourselves at the moment as we deal with, we confront our history. Power, I think. Um, the power dynamic that exists between people in different relationships. And I think that power is a timeless dynamic. That although this is a, an historical piece, something that I kept coming back to was that I feel like this piece could exist today between the enslaved human and the person who owns them, between the husband and the wife, between the employee and the employer, class, race, gender. So for me, it was about power. 
at the heart of it. I think in every single scene, <laughs> that's, what, that's what was literally being played out. Who's holding the cards now? Who's got the upper hand? Who's pulling the rug from the other person? Who's asserting themselves? You know, if you've got two people sitting on, on each end of a table, if you've got one person sitting, one person standing, you've got someone standing on the table, someone looking up, you know, you've got um, someone whose chair is moving towards, someone under the table. So I think we exploited um, spatially what you can do with four chairs and a table um, and every picture without anyone saying a word is telling you a story. If you're close to someone nose to nose or you're miles away, someone's down on the floor and someone's over them. I think you could almost storyboard the play and, and follow the narrative um, and the power dynamic. When you've got nothing really on stage, four chairs and a table, you can do anything. You can be anywhere. It's almost like the less you have, the more limitless your possibility is. Once you start filling a stage with things, objects, uh, you get more literal about where you are, time and place, location. There's so many scenes and I wanted things to move quickly. Although it's in the historical piece, I wanted it to feel very contemporary in its rhythm. And I was quite, I thought it, there was something filmic about it all because it's all two, three, four people scenes long conversations, that there was something filmic and compressed about it all. If two people both turn their back and walk around a space and I say, well, just imagine you're in this endless corridor of this big house, suddenly we are. And the jump cuts between scenes, I mean, some scenes shifted in a, set, in a beat. You know, you just turn and suddenly it's three days later. And I think that's just totally nicked from film, really, that we just, you know, I just say jump cut, different time, different place, different energy, different heart rates, different temperature. And so, again, there's quite outside in that you're asking them to physically kind of just um, make a big shift. And in doing so, we've gone on the journey with you. Um, sound and the, the composition really helped as well, actually, when I think about how we would go from rainy, grey, um, Ballandine estate to hot, um, vibrant um, outdoor Jamaica. You know, that, that the lights would do something very bold. You go, you know, from gray to gold. Uh, the sound would go from a fireplace um, and rain to bird song and waves. So those creative elements also really help make those shifts and changes. about what's really going on. People can look like they're having very civilised conversations with each other and they're being terribly polite and maybe generous. But that's not always what's really going on. And so for me, every scene, what's written is one thing, what's presented is one thing, but what's really going on underneath the surface and what's really going on is the opposite of polite, um, convivial and generous, it's violent and it's uh, abusive and it's um, selfish and it's frightened. Um, and I think that's why I feel the piece resonates with me so much as a contemporary reflection because really the piece is about the death of the patriarchy, which is why I feel it resonates so much for our current time because we're living in a moment, or an extended moment, let's see where it takes us, where uh, historic abuse of power is being called out. Um, and as a result, I think those, that demographic who traditionally have held the power, um, I think of a certain American president in this context, is lashing out, you know, the violence that we meet um, because they feel so under threat that the power they have held onto and dominated for so long is now under fire. And so that's where Sir John, when he's called out by his wife, by his um, slave, by Joseph, and by his servant, releases such violence on them all because he's, he's frightened, because his world order is crumbling, which I feel is, is where we are now. Mm -hmm.